Hello guys and welcome to a new Star Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you a 2 vs 2 on Vertigo and I'm going to be playing with the 82nd Airborne. So 82nd Airborne being one of the latest divisions and Vertigo being one of the latest maps. I have showed this map off before briefly but yeah pretty cool map. Hills on both sides with this sort of valley that goes through the middle. Quite open honestly in the very centre of the map. Uh, so you do have to be a little bit careful there. But going to be joined by Gotz on my team today. He's going to be using the 3rd Armoured Division. I just want to say a big props to Gotz. He was a very uh, good teammate to have. He was kind of talking to me in the chat and making sure that we had a plan. Uh, so that was awesome. And then we had Wooden Box and Finn on the enemy team who are going to be playing with the 39th Guards and the 4th Mochutsen. Wooden Box you might have seen before. Very good opponent in Warno, so always good to play against him, it's lots of fun. Uh, but let's have a quick look at my deployment here. So in true airborne style we have deployed almost everything outside of the deployment zone <laughs> and right up here using the airborne uh, ability that they have. It allows you to deploy airborne units beyond even recon units. But I've got a couple of TOTUs we got the airborne units, we got some military police for the M67s, there's a couple of Avengers in there, a couple of Stingers. I've also got the Humvees with the grenade launchers, and I've also got a leader early on. And then back at the spawn, we have a Cobra. Always fun to watch these helicopters in action, so I'll make sure to do that plenty throughout this game. I want to show you guys this game mainly because it really showed off like a true airborne style. I use a lot of helicopters in this game and it was really really fun to do so. Now one thing I did want to mention at the start is you see I back cap this fox drop sector really fast and it is giving us some extra points. Now, it doesn't really affect this match much but basically this is sometimes a really good thing to do particularly if the middle of the map becomes a bit of a stalemate. Like if you capture your sectors before your opponent does and manage to get a decent enough lead you can just win off the 50-50 like stalemate so it's totally totally fine if you do that early on anyway they're going to back cap theirs we're going to get 75 points up on the enemy again doesn't really matter too much for this game but there we go mi2 going to get blasted by the avenger we're going to see mig 21 come in for my h1f already and that's going to get shot down and i tell you what that's not the last you're going to see of aircraft in this game <laughs> here comes a mig 21 bis using the mi2 what he did was he basically spotted everywhere that I unloaded and he's going to bring in all these MiG-21s and try and bomb them. So he kills off the airborne there and one of the, or two of my M67 squads. He absolutely chips my airborne squads here with those bombers and yeah, <laughs> he's going to lose those very quickly. Uh, so that was three bombers already. Nice initial strategy here from Finn just to try and bomb the crap out of my infantry so that he can push forwards with his Fauschimjäger. And the Fauschimjäger are like relatively decent squads uh, but in this case I'm able to get the grenade launcher on target. We're also going to be targeting these Strela 2Ms. The reason I'm targeting the Strelas specifically is so that I can move forwards the Cobra and as soon as those start falling back I'm going to move forwards the Cobra so it can get its Hydra rockets on target. It's like losing a big chunk of my infantry early on is going to definitely affect my ability to deal with these Fauschim Jaegers. So this Cobra's got a lot of work to do. On the bombing strike coming, coming in for the Humvee. And the Su-22 there also picks off the H-1F with its AA missile. So yeah, that was a pretty nice bombing strike for him. Because it gets rid of that cover that I had on the right hand side. And also the rockets that I would have been able to resupply on my Chinook here that I have now brought in. But I'm going to be using that to resupply the stingers of the Avengers anyway. On the left hand side my military police also went down. Yeah this uh, Humvee really really trying its best right now <laughs> to get the kills onto these infantry units but another bomber coming in SU-22 gonna go down. <laughs> <laughs> there was so many aircraft coming into this game, it was actually ridiculous, and, and most of them ending up like this, with floating wheels. 
Uh, but no, the SU-22 M4s, I think they're like 240 points. I actually checked after this game because I was really curious how many points he was throwing away every time one of these bombing strikes would come in. Now, obviously, you can see that he has chunked my units massively. Like, both of these airborne are really low. Uh, these military police can't really do too much because they've run out of recoilless rifle ammo. And uh, same with these guys. So... I'm basically left with four units of military police up against multiple units of Fauschenjäger and I'm rushing to get more airborne units to the front line. Now one mistake that I have been making a lot lately with uh, Warno is basically not reinforcing at the start of the game quick enough because you get a lot of points. Anyway another MiG-21 going to be coming in there with the bombing strike. Does kill one of my airborne units but going to be going down for that. I just don't seem to reinforce myself quick enough. <laughs> There's also another plane going down. <laughs> that was one of our planes. I think that was Gotz's plane. Um, yeah, I keep getting distracted by all these planes. Um, like, reinforcing myself quick enough in the early game is something that I, I've really been kind of failing to do lately. So I should have had these airborne units here a lot sooner, but regardless. They've now arrived. I do lose all of my military police on the left hand side. Again, not much I would really do about that. I could try and run away, but then the Fashmeg would probably kill them out in the open. Uh, but since the airborne have arrived and the bombing strikes come through already, I'm now going to be able to get the better of these Fashmeg. We have way more men. I've got the M60s that I'm going to be able to fire away. And yeah, these Fashmeg are just going to be getting cleaned up now. Another thing that was actually pretty interesting is these Avengers. I've noticed over time that. With their 50 cal that they have, they're actually pretty strong. Another MiG bomber coming in for the bombing strike. I believe did take out another unit of infantry. That one's actually going to get away with it as well. My Avengers weren't really in the right place to shoot that down. More airborne on the way. And yeah, pretty much just airborne versus Fauschmeger right now. Going to be moving through the rubble. And engaging the Flarek Strellas here. Killing off the AA is a really good way for me to get my helicopters back online. So that's what I'm trying to do there. And also the AT4, good enough to kill off the T-55 that had joined the fray. AT4 is firing off again, but missing. We managed to kill off one of the BMPs at least. That one going to get taken out though, my airborne unit going down. And these two airborne units, getting them resupplied. I think these were in this building, they were on low health, but getting them fixed up again from pretty much no health to max health is really good value for me because it basically means that his bombers were wasted uh, if they don't actually get those kills entirely. Like if I can kill off his um, units with these airborne now, you know, it's going to be extra value for those. But really nice use of the Fashimiga Metis there to pick off my Avengers on the backside. So I'm definitely going to have to make sure I have more of those coming in with the amount of aircraft that he's been using. But I wasn't even sure at this point, like, how many aircraft he had left. Because we'd already shot down so many. We shot down two of the SU-22s. We shot down, like, two of the MiG-21 uh, HE bombers. We shot down a MiG-21 AA like air to air unit so yeah I was like how many more units can there really be anyway airborne units doing okay cleaning up some of the armored vehicles with the AT4s and uh, just trying to get into a good position to continue engaging these Mochitsum because the Mochitsum were actually kind of getting the better of my airborne which isn't something they should really do but with the support of the BMP1 I think that was the main reason why so as I start to pick off the armored fire support, the Mutchets are going to have a harder time out in the open dealing with my units. I get an airborne unit into the back of the sector finally, and that's going to be giving me extra veterancy for my airborne units, as well as capturing the sector, so that is going to finally put us at a plus two. The right side's been uh, contested the entire time, but I think Guts's uh, unit just got taken out there his command. And since he's been using bombers on me, I'm now going to use bombers on him. So I've got a Cobra coming in down there, as you can see. The F-111F coming in with the nade palm is going to be looking for the kill onto the infantry. It does do a little bit of damage, 
and then whatever damage needs to be done is left up to my airborne there. I also brought in some napalm here, but I don't think it actually hit much on the right-hand side because Finn dodged it by running forwards. My airborne really not dealing with this too well right now, so it's going to be really up to my AH-1F Cobra to come along and get some rockets on target. I've also got an M1 IP, but I was very much expecting that to get hit by AT from the enemy's planes at some point. But there they go, the rockets. Absolutely slamming this infantry. Take them out very quickly. And then as soon as that's run out of rockets, going to be landing it to get the supply there from the CH-47. SU-22. Did come in and take out my tank. But is going to go down in the process. As he didn't also evac that, so... Another SU-22 down. And this is quite amusing. My Cobra here. I was trying to reload it. But it ended up being in line of sight of the Mochitsun. So it fired its rockets <laughs> while it was landed. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to take it off again. And we're going to be engaging even more of these. So the Fashimega. Still alive on this left hand side. My airborne not really doing too great at cleaning them up. But H1F is going to take out one of them. Got is moving over with his Apache. SU-22 coming in. Another MiG coming in. And well, goodbye helicopters. My Avengers do do well to hit these and I'm also going to be bringing in an Eagle here. So one of the MiG-21s goes down. We're going to be chasing the second one. Some pro piloting from my F-15. It's going to allow it to gun run that MiG down. And flare itself out. Very cool. <laughs> Very cool indeed. Anyway, we're in a really bad spot right now. All of those aircraft constantly coming in is really causing me issues. But the H1F still here to provide some rockets on target. Oh yeah, this was another AH-1F that went down. And then there was the Apache that got shot down here that wasn't mine. But either way, yeah, not ideal. <laughs> Getting this landed onto the Chinook, super important. So I can get that reloaded and back in the fight once again. I've also got the AH-1F Heavy Hog. Actually, I think that's what the one on the right hand side there was. A heavy hog. These ones have the 127mm rocket pawns, so they can delete infantry almost all, almost faster than the 70mm rockets. The nice thing about the 127mm rockets though is they can actually do a decent chunk of damage to armoured targets as well. Now I was pretty sure at this point that I'd killed most of the like flower axe trailers that my opponent was using, so I'm just kind of pushing up aggressively with the heavy hog to see if I can find the enemy command. And I do manage to find the SBW there. H1F, also going to be able to blast some infantry for the airborne. So I managed to get rid of the enemy leader. And MiG-21 does come in. Shoot down my H1F, but it actually survives, so that was pretty nice. Airborne's going to clean up the mod shits in there. After it stops spinning around... Gonna be trying to come back, but another MiG coming in, this time from Wooden Box, <laughs> from the MiG-23 MLA. <laughs> Just the amount of aircraft that we used in this, this game was utterly ridiculous. But it is very spectacular, I suppose. Lots of airborne coming in to reinforce. I've got another leader on the way. My last one got bombed to pieces, so... Yep, just trying to recover my position now against my opponent, who's probably also trying to do the same. You can see these Flower Extrellas trying their best to shoot down the Cobra, but they're not very accurate, thankfully. These only have, like, 30% accuracy. But that's why I was able to get away with that. I'm trying to move my Chinook forwards. This is a little bit risky, but the reason I was doing it was to resupply the Stingers back here that had run out of ammo. Getting them back online would make it a lot easier for me to shoot down these aircraft that are coming over overhead. 
What that does mean is that my H1F Cobra is not getting resupplied for the time being. So moving through the rubble once more with the airborne units. And I'm going to be discovering that Finn has now brought in a bunch of these T-55s. Then we're going to have to deal with with my AT-4s. More airborne on the way though. And more mechanized rifles. And back here even more airborne. Now the Chinook. Unfortunately moving that forwards did cost me the helicopter. The machine guns of the T-55 plus the Strela 2Ms did get the better of me. My airborne here, they're trying to engage the T-55s. I did unfortunately lose one of these airborne before they unloaded, but I'm able to get in range with the AT-4. Kill one. Looking for the next one. Also got my H1F Cobra actually targeting the Strela squads. I just kind of went for it in the end with this H1F Cobra because I really needed the support against the T55s and the infantry here. And it's also going to get a lot of really good rockets onto these mod shoots and they've just unloaded from the BMP. T55 goes down. Absolute carnage there was in this game. Also got my Stingers now engaging the MI-8. That's going to go down. And now my airborne are moving around the tree line here with my sort of orders. So I'm basically doing like a holding shift and just attack moving the whole way around so that they stay in the cover while they move up to the BMP one piece. Because the idea here is to kill them with the AT-4s, of course. But Cobra's back. Another plane goes down. New Chinooks on the way with more supply. More airborne have arrived in the meantime. Yeah. They're at the plus two again. And we did end up losing a bunch of points briefly. I think that was because uh, Gots is having a bit of a back and forth here with wooden box on the right hand side. But here comes another SU-22 with that bombing strike does get shot down. I'm going to bring in my napalm to engage his BMP-1Ps. And the napalm doesn't quite hit the mark, but my airborne unit with its AT-4 kills both of the BMP-1s anyway, so I'm happy with that. But losing two airborne units here to that bomber was unfortunate. Now looking for this airborne to kill a couple of these BMPs didn't have line of sight in the end on the second one until it moved forwards so I didn't really get off enough shots to kill it which is unfortunate but again Cobra is coming in for the landing next to the supply chopper to get those rockets back on board got my airborne here doing an attack move towards these Mutchitsen Now these Mutchitsen are actually the ones with the extra MGs which does mean that they are gonna be able to stun my units at range but I do have a decent chunk of units. That's okay. Like we got basically outnumber our enemy quite nicely. And the mechanized rifle there with the Dragon 2 is going to kill off the BMP-1. So that was good as well. Bring up more of these mechanized rifles now. Since I've managed to get a relatively good position back into these buildings. I figured that mechanized rifles would be a better shout. MiG-21 coming in again. <laughs> Does kill off another one of my airborne units. Now those planes, they cost like 100 points I believe. So killing like one of my airborne units for 80 points, or 60 points in this case, is not worth it, but that's already killed another squad, so technically it's already paid itself off. And that's why you'll see that Finn is doing this. He's, he's sacrificing his planes in an attempt to get value out of them, so that he can then like push and secure the ground with his infantry. Because that's pretty much how the fourth works like <laughs> there isn't really much else that he can do in this situation like overall my division's kitted out a lot better than his is but there goes another plane <laughs> trading that for the h1f unfortunately for him i've got another two on the way already another couple heavy hogs coming in to help support against these units So mechanized rifles, just trying to get them into position where they can 
engage this armor. The Dragon 2 is good enough to engage these BMP1s quite effectively. You can see the Heavy Hogs just annihilating infantry out in the open again. Those rockets really, really strong. And as soon as they are out of ammunition on those rockets, we're going to be landing them next to the supply. And that's a trend you're going to see the entire time. Now we've got Little Birds coming up as well. These have got 14 Hydras each. And they're going to be using them to engage the Strella 2Ms. And taking those out. Unfortunately, there was quite a lot of them, so eventually they hit, <laughs> and my little bird does go down. But this one I'm pulling back just out of range, and we're going to be landing it. These heavy hogs are now ready to go again, so getting them to take off. And once again, the rocket's just going to be slamming into this infantry. And then I'm landing almost immediately to get the rockets on target again. So I'm pretty much just playing with RNG here, which is not something I should do, honestly, <laughs> very often. <laughs> but here comes a MiG. MiG-23 MLA. Basically suicides for the Heavy Hog. That was Wooden Box's aircraft that time. <laughs> and yeah. Another one bites the dust. <laughs> so many, so many uh, aircraft in this game. It's actually incredible uh, that we managed to shoot down. Mechanized rifles still, in the meantime, trying to trade with these Modschützen. But this is a good example of where the machine guns can be really useful for the Modschützen. Um, with those extra MGs, they can pin down and stun the mechanized rifles. It does make quite a big difference. MI-8 going to be going down again, and I've got a bunch more mechanized rifles now arriving in the uh, trucks here. As soon as the unload, we're just going to be going selling the trucks, of course. And, well, it's time for another push with helicopters. <laughs> we got three little birds and the Cobra. Look how cool that looks. Coming in to assault the front. And the nice thing here is that we've got really, really close to the Strela 2Ms. So I'm going to be able to engage them with the airborne and the mechanized rifles. And if I can kill them before my helicopters get here, well, my helicopters are going to have a great time. SU-24 coming in for the cluster onto the M1A1. It does end up getting shot down, but trading a cluster bomber for a tank is always a good trade. Trading two, though, maybe not so much. Little bird. Gonna be moving forwards. This time I'm trying to use the miniguns. Now the miniguns don't have the longest range, but they can do a decent chunk of damage to infantry at short range. There we go. <laughs> Wiping out the mod in there with the help of the rockets. Wooden box is gonna spoil my day though by bringing in a Bruce on this left hand side. So this uh, producer here, forcing me to fall back with my other little bird after losing one. And we're going to be landing next to the supply chopper once again. So really looking for this kill onto the producer. Unfortunately, my mechanized rifle kind of missed there. But I did manage to hit it with the next one, so that was okay. And this is where, again, where the mechanized rifles are much better than the airborne in this case, because they have the range to engage things like these T-55s and the uh, BMP-1s. The only issue that you have is if your opponent has this many T-55s, then you kind of bump into some problems. And I don't have like a cluster bomber that's going to be able to deal with those very quickly. So I'm very reliant on just using these rockets from this uh, Cobra over and over and over again. And I can also, of course, bring in some tanks like the M1 IP, but haven't chosen to do that just yet. Got some more Humvees. Got the little birds moving up. They're looking for more rockets on target. My little little bird squad. Gonna get hit there. And, well. They go down. <laughs> there was an Osa here, or two Osas. 
and they also got close enough to fire a rocket that killed both of them in one go, so that wasn't great. One of my F-111Fs is going to go down trying to napalm these tanks, but Finn is going to be dodging that. He's going to be dodging the cluster as well. And I don't think my F-111Fs even ended up uh, dropping their bombs, but yeah, nice little move here from Gotz. He was kind of harassing the spawn back there, which is going to give him a little bit of a chance to get back into the sector. But yeah, this has been a crazy game so far. Gotz is going to be coming in the Wild Weasel. It's going to be hitting the Kub. I think the Osa got taken out by the uh, Cluster. And on the left there, that one also going down to the Wild Weasel. So nice use of seed there to clean up the anti-air. Now I've got an Apache coming in. My biggest helicopter with its Hellfire missiles. Looking to pop some of these T-55s. I've also got my own F-16 coming over with its seed try and take care of that if it didn't die to that missile that already went in there because sometimes the missiles can like hit very close to them and not actually get the kill so unless you see the kill sometimes it's it's hard to tell if something actually died but here goes the hellfires looking for the kill onto the t55 there got the m1 ips coming up as well the Apache wasn't really doing very well, like, it has a 17% accuracy. And it only, like, killed, like, one or two of these T-55s, it just kept missing. <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous, honestly. There was one there. My Abrams trying to engage the T-55 right now is taking a lot of damage. But I got another two on the way. At this range, the T-55 AM2s, with their 14 penetration, can start to break through the 17 front armor. Look at those HGMs come in though. <laughs> That's the BMP 1Ps back here that have arrived. And he's gonna be firing off loads of these Malgitkas towards my tanks. And while some of them do hit, they only do one damage per hit onto the front armor of my tank, so. Fortunately, I don't have to worry that much. Eventually, I decide that I'm going to like just commit with the M1 IPs to try and kill the BMP ones. The the other thing I should have done at this point is had the Apache land and get some more uh, Hellfires, but I kind of just left it there. The Hydras, in this case, are pretty useful for killing the Muchets and those, so that wasn't too bad of a choice. But the SU-22 going to be coming in with its rocket, going to be hitting the M1IP with one of those, leaving it on one health, is end up going to end up going down. And my Apache here, it did take an air-to-air -air missile from the SU-22, so now I'm going to be landing it next to the supply. But SU-22 coming in with the cluster, check out the split. Almost perfect. Unfortunately, it forced my M1 IP too far forwards and I get side shot by the Rapiero here. So that was unfortunate. Uh, but with the last of Finn's planes going down and his push getting a little bit dismantled here, especially by that cluster, he is going to surrender. And that's going to leave us with only wooden box to buy against here. And well, we are going to secure the sector for the time being. And now it's just a matter of cleaning up against the AI with this grenade launcher, which is good against this infantry. And I've got the Apache. It's going to be able to move forwards again to start engaging the BMP ones. Also still got the Heavy Hog back here. Yeah, lots and lots of helicopters used throughout this game. The Little Birds, the Heavy Hogs, the normal AH-1Fs. I've got the Apache. Like, it, was, it was actually really cool to kind of do this airborne style. It was quite frustrating, I'll admit, though, to play against all of these aircraft early on. And, well, no fun allowed by Wooden Box, as he's going to come in there and kill off my Apache. He actually manages to somehow get away with that, without getting that shot down. <laughs> like, my Eagle does come in, but it's a bit too late. So I'm just going to be evac in that. Airborne Scout moving forwards here. I was trying to keep eyes on the Shurapilla, 
Like, it had really good kind of stealth in this tree line when I didn't have eyes on it with recon. Uh, so it's kind of making it difficult for me to, like, push anything up in the open on this side because it would always get, like, side shot by the Rapira. So, yeah, that was a bit of a pain. But Seed coming in there, going to be taking out the Osa. F-16 doing a good job. And the Airborne trying their best against these monsters, but again, you can just see how annoying these can be. Another kill there for the F-16 as I kill the Berusa. Also managed to get an AA missile onto the MI-2, which was nice. Yeah, those airborne units are going to have to fall back. And the Mutchutson haven't taken any damage whatsoever. Airborne really, really struggling to do any sort of damage. And the mechanized rifles have arrived with their extra MGs. We are going to be able to pin down that unit. But we've pretty much secured this left-hand side now for the plus two. It's just a matter of dealing with uh, Wooden Box. Who is a pretty tough opponent, so... <laughs> Try my best. M67, nice shot there onto the SBW. These things don't have the best accuracy. They're 35%. But that was a pretty clean shot onto the SBW. But they're still going to be capping or counter capping this sector with another unit on this right hand side. Another nice kill there from the M67 though. And the Mutchets on the left finally going down. And back here you can see that my supply helicopters are coming out in force as I'm trying to repair my M1 IPs and resupply my infantry squads and also the helicopters. This Humvee also ran out of grenade launcher ammunition so I ended up having to move that back as well to resupply on these helicopters. But F-15 hanging about. That did get some good hits onto an SU-25 on the right hand side that then got finished off with his own eagle. But scouts coming in once again. And well, since most of the AA, I presume, is dead, I wanted to use the A-10 rocket planes, which is something that I don't really get much chance to do because they're not very good. But they are fun to use. So, A-10s coming in with their Hydra rockets. The thing is with these A-10s is they have the same rockets as like the H-1F. So, you know, it's you got the similar sort of hitting power. The only good thing about having the A-10 is that you've got the Avenger. And the Avenger's actually pretty good at uh, killing armored targets. It's got the six penetration. So, looking for the T-80B here. My other A-10 kind of got left behind. Look at that, F0111F, or E, sorry, and the F4G going over the top. The A10's going to do a gun run on the T80. That's going to survive on 4 health. In the front armor, unfortunately not going to be doing that much damage. But of course, I do have a second one that can come in for another run, so it's on its way. So we're briefly going to get a plus 4 as Guts makes his push on the right hand side. Let's watch this gun run into the T-80B. There we go, beautiful. And shoot down the MI-8 there. Very nice indeed. A nice push coming through from Guts. My A-10 is going to tank quite a lot of shots <laughs> going in deep into enemy lines. But I figured that I couldn't just press the evac button here because I'd end up going over enemy AA again. So what I decided to do was daringly try and escape over the mountain here <laughs> to the edge of the map. I'm also gonna bring in an F-15 to cover it against enemy aircraft that might come in. Or like if my opponents were to bring in like a, an enemy fighter, I'd be able to shoot it down with the F-15 if it and then trade for the A-10 basically. Because the A-10 would almost likely 100% go down. So it's still only on three health. Yeah, get it to a point where I feel like it's safe, and then I'm going to evac it from there. So I do manage to deal with the leader that was in the corner of our sector here at Alpha. 
And on the right-hand side, well, Godz's push actually ends up getting broken down by a large number of T-62s, which are going to be counter-pushing us on this right-hand side. So T-80BV there to back them up. Gotz is going to be trying to face off with the M1A1 Abrams, but does have some... Raz Vedka pushing him. These are going to be tanking those HGMs in the front armor, but he's still going to be forced back for the time being. I did have my Toad 2 that was able to fire to the right-hand side and engage these T-62s as well, but was having limited... Uh, limited uh, effectiveness. My heavy hog here moved up, engaged with its rockets. I should have probably brought that back. But my M1IPs, they're basically in position here, trying to engage the BTR. But I kept getting hit by this Blimin Rapira AT gun that I still hadn't killed, <laughs> which is really, really annoying. This is just like wooden box put this here, and I, I swear it was so irritating throughout this game because it just couldn't maintain line of sight over it. And I kept baiting myself thinking I should have line of sight over it because of the airborne scout being here. But you can see that the airborne scout isn't like close enough to the edge of the tree line here to actually see it. So he ends up killing another M1IP with that up here, um, which really sucked. Anyway, more M1IPs on the way to help out Gots on this right hand side. We've got a nice squad of M1IPs that are ready to line up and counter push on the right hand side here. And then, uh, meanwhile, artillery going to be coming in onto wooden boxes, BTR-60. Uh, that was from uh, Gotts here with his M109s, which is quite nice. Heavy Hog going to be able to take out one of the Eagler squads on that left side. But here we go, M1IPs getting in position. I always love watching these tank pushes. They're really fun to watch. I've done this before, but all of my M1IPs ready and waiting to go we're gonna be making the push forwards i'm also gonna be bringing in an oh 58 scout to join these m1 ips as i push forward so i was just gonna wait for that to arrive also got these uh, humvee toad twos are moving up on the left flank but off we go the push begins We're going to be engaging those T-62s up here. There's also the T-80BV. These M1IPs just pushing super aggressively into the heavy cover. I know that it's unlikely that he's going to have much in the way of infantry supporting this armor because it would have taken him time to get it up here. So that's why I'm confident in being quite aggressive into these tanks. And between my M1IPs and the M1A1s, we absolutely demolish uh, the enemy units here. MI8T <laughs> from the AI. Just going for a ride. Quite funny. Does end up getting shot down by the machine guns in the end. And the scout's going to come up and reveal some information for us. On the left side, BTR-60 finally goes down. And the Heavy Hogs going to be dealing finally with the Rapera. And the AH-1F's just immediately falling back again every time to the supply. In this case, <laughs> look at that. Smoke coming out of it looks really cool. This Abrams is blasting T-55s at a distance. Fortunately, my Kiowa back here got shot down. I wasn't even sure how. It turns out it was the Su-22 M4P that killed it. I've got my scout moving forwards. That's just a 
basically suicide scout into the enemy to make sure that we have line of sight for these tanks. Pretty important that we do. Also, we want to try and find where the enemy command is so that we can make sure that we have the victory. Because at this point, we were 1,208 points to 951. There's one minute and 15 seconds left on the clock. I wasn't sure if we had enough to win at this point like, or whether or not it would be a draw. So I was a little bit worried about that, which is why I'm kind of just like frantically spreading out my tanks trying to find the enemy command. But my helicopter does get shot down, so these M1IPs are going to be pretty blind to where the enemy command is. Like We already killed the command in this sector, so I was assu assuming that that would be it. We're bringing in F-111F for Napalm, just going to be dropping that onto these tanks so that they can't sit still. And also, you know, if they sit in that Napalm, they will die over time, so there is that. And my Humvee does find the Sozvetka unit, which my M1IP is going to be engaging. Yeah, just trying to spread out, find the enemy command here. There's no way that it should be here. <laughs> Turns out it was hiding in this tree line. About, I don't even know how close that is to my tank, but it ends up killing my tank and I end up losing line of sight. I don't have anything to bomb it or anything at this point. It doesn't die. And the game ends, so <laughs> good job by Wooden Box to carry on the game and uh, really be a nuisance, I guess. And that was a pretty, pretty interesting game of Warno, that's for sure. We shot down so many aircraft. Look at this. SU-22 M4, MiG-21 BIS, MiG-21 BIS, SU-22. These are both like HE bombers. That one's an AA. Uh, Macobra managed to get some decent infantry kills. Stinger shot down another two aircraft there with the MI-8. Um, we shot, we killed a lot of these Flarax, which allowed the Cobra here to get so many kills. Like this is a huge kill list for this AH-1F Cobra. Um, the Avenger here again getting another two air kills. Uh, Eagle shot down two um, aircraft. That was really cool watching the F-15 uh, shoot down one of these MiGs with its gun. That was really, really cool. And then this Avenger, look at that, another six aircraft. Like, there was so many aircraft. It was unbelievable. And as soon as uh, my opponent, Finn, ran out of them, I think he just felt like he was doomed. And honestly, it really comes down to the way that the fourth is. Like, during the game, I was really frustrated that I was kind of, like, being air-spammed, um, like, in quotation marks. But going and looking at the deck afterwards, I realized that, honestly, the fourth in this map it kind of forces you to play that way. So, you know, it is what it is. And uh, yeah, I feel like it was it was a fun game nonetheless. And it was an interesting one to record for you guys. So that's it. Yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.